Hello guys and welcome to another installment of A Computers and Technology. Now today was supposed to be a garage sale finds day, but unfortunately it's a complete washout outside, really nasty weather out there, all the sales packed up and went inside, so we're not going to have a garage sale finds episode this weekend unfortunately. I really wanted to get one out because a lot of people were asking me to get one out, but it's just not going to happen because there's nothing out there, there's no point of going out and wasting a bunch of gas uh, because all the sales have packed up and went in. So instead... We're going to have a little repair video today because it is time to get some of this stuff back up and running. I want to get my power supply back up and running. And I want to get this UPS back up in working order as well. All it needs is a new battery. I put this one through some testing and it does work. So I'm pretty sure if I just replace the battery in this, it should be up and running. And this should be a successful repair today. This on the other hand, not super sure about. Now I went through this and tested out a bunch of components, pulled out a lot of stuff. And the only thing that I could really find that was somewhat faulty in this unit was this big uh, 50 volt, 4700 microfarad uh, filter capacitor. This was kind of off as far as readings are concerned. So I went on eBay, bought a new capacitor. It's a little bit larger than the old one. So I'm kind of concerned that might not fit inside the case. Uh, but either way, we're gonna see if the capacitor was the problem. We're gonna throw this new capacitor in there and see if the power supply actually powers up and functions properly uh, because I would really like to get my power supply back online uh, for a couple experiments and for personal use as well. That being said, I'm going to start out with the power supply repair because I know for a fact that this is probably going to be a success. I'm 99% sure that all we're going to have to do with this is replace the battery. With the power supply on the other hand, not so sure. Um, I'm pretty sure that the capacitor right here is the problem, but it is a possibility that it might not be and it might have been something else. I could have missed something when I was uh, going through and testing everything out. So uh, if this is a failure, I would prefer the successful repair to be at the end so I feel somewhat good about myself at the end of this video. And by the way, I do have videos going a little bit more in depth on both of these. If you want to check those videos out, the links for those will be in the description. So I'm going to push this off to the side. We're going to open this power supply up and pop a new capacitor in. And I am sort of racing against time right now because the baby is currently asleep and I would prefer to finish both of these repairs before he wakes up. So I'm going to try to do these quickly, uh, but at the same time, I'm going to try not to botch anything up. I just kind of slid that big capacitor in to see how it would fit and of course it is way too tall so I really should have checked the dimensions before I ordered that capacitor. I feel uh, really silly now. It's another dumb mistake. I don't know why I did that. So I'm going to just go ahead and take this board out and solder the capacitor in to see if it is indeed the problem. Then we might try to work out some really weird modification to get this to fit inside the case properly. All right, let's do this, and I do apologize for the noise in the background in advance because I have my fume extractor right under the microphone, and I know the microphone is probably picking up all of that noise. By the way, the seller for these capacitors actually sent me the wrong ones initially, so now I have some uh, 50 volt 6800 microfarad capacitors as well. Got those for free because they had to reship uh, these, which are the 4700 microfarad capacitors. So I'm just going to go ahead and line this up and slide it in, make sure the polarity is correct. That is correct, so I'm just going to slide it in now, and we're going to solder you down. Alright, so that job is done. My fume extractor kind of failed there. I paused for a minute, and I was like, oh, whatever, I'll just let the stuff go everywhere. Uh, wasn't exactly taking up that smoke properly. Uh, but I'm going to put everything back together and see if this thing powers on. And of course my microphone was unplugged for that last clip. Oh, that's so annoying. Not to refilm it all over again. Anyway, uh, this did end up being a failure, unfortunately, and I did kind of expect it to be a failure from the get-go because I wasn't 100% sure if this capacitor was the root of the problem. It looked like it was the root of the problem, but it turns out it was not because the power supply is still non-functional. Now, at this point, I'm thinking I could have overlooked something during the initial testing. Uh, maybe I'll go back and check some of the transistors again because, once again, I could have missed something, um, and I really do want to get this back online but at this point I've wasted like 10 bucks on it already these are super cheap online they're like 35 bucks these are student power supplies because really they're pretty cheap and disposable yeah the, the quality is okay they get the job done uh, but once again they're not gonna break the bank if uh, you blow one up like I did <laughs> also uh, it could be a possibility that one of the ICs on this board has gone bad I mean I'm not sure how I would go about testing that because I feel like that's something that you would need to actually uh, you know, have a identical board and put it in and see if it works. 
Uh, if you guys can give me any tips on that, I would really appreciate it. I might have to go online and do some research. I'm looking at the baby monitor right now. And of course, the baby has uh, woken up, so I'm going to have to stop this right here. Um, but after I get back, I'm going to take a couple more stabs at this. Uh, I'm going to show you guys what I mean by uh, the uh, odd capacitor placement. And then we'll move on to that uh, UPS. I'm back and I'm just going to go over this real quickly because I thought it was trivial yet interesting. So look at the how this capacitor is actually mounted now. This is the negative terminal right here. This is the positive lead right here. Let me see if I can get the camera to focus in on that. There we go. Now you guys can actually see that. So our negative polarity lead, positive polarity lead. And let me show you uh, what it looks like it's actually supposed to be sitting at because at first I mounted it wrong, but it looked right. And you'll understand what I mean in just a minute. This is what threw me off. Looking at the labeling on the board, I just assumed that you would just plop the capacitor down within the circle with the negative polarity lead going through here and the positive polarity lead going through here. Uh, but that was not the case because they have it mounted or they originally had it mounted uh, in this diagonal configuration. So uh, the negative polarity lead goes in here and the positive polarity lead goes in here, which is really weird, uh, contrary to what the uh, silk screen on the top of the board actually says. That really threw me off. So instead, uh, where'd it go? So instead of jumping across like so, with the leads going through here, they're actually going along this beefy trace right here. This is where the, uh, is that negative? Yeah, that's where the negative polarity lead would go, and that's where your positive lead would go. So a uh, really weird way of mounting it. That threw me off initially. But I eventually figured it out because I had taken a picture of the board before just in case I needed it, and that's where it actually came in handy. <laughs> All right, so this repair should be quick and painless, knock on wood, um, but all I should have to do is pull this apart, throw a new battery in, and it should be back online. So that's exactly what I am about to do. Now that little ethernet surge protector fell out when I pulled it apart, but besides that, it came apart without incidents. So, so far, so good, I'm just gonna Hook the battery up now, toss it in, make sure it is in the off position because I think it might cut on if we hook a battery up. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna try to power it on. You should hear a little beep here in a second and the inverter should cut on. There we go, so it is online. I'm gonna throw this back together and put a little load on it. Okay, so I have a little load on it. This is a lamp with a 50 watt halogen bulb in it and let's just cut power and see what happens. All right, so it is in working order. That's all good, so I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up to my server. Whew, 30 minutes later, finally managed to get everything hooked up to the UPS. You can see it's stuck there right under my web server, and I'm gonna go ahead and unplug power from the UPS to see if it can handle the load. There we go, the monitor and that server are both running off the UPS. I didn't bother to plug the uh, external hard drive into the UPS because it's mainly just for backups and it runs backups like once a week. So it's not critical that that stays online, but it is critical that the server and the monitor stay online. Uh, the monitor needs to stay online so I can actually power the server off if the uh, blackout lasts too long. And of course the server needs to remain online so I don't have to keep turning it back on every time the power goes out. Well, we managed to get one thing up and running, and I'm pretty satisfied with that. If you have any tips for me as far as getting the power supply back up and working, I would really appreciate it if you would just leave them in the comments section. Once again, I am a student, haven't taken any classes related to anything like electronic or anything, so I'm all self-taught, so I would appreciate any feedback you could uh, leave in the comments section. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can also post a comment in the comments section. Uh, don't forget to like this video. If you didn't like this video, please tell me why. Uh, don't forget to check out my Patreon. Don't forget to drop a like on the Facebook page. I'm trying to remember all the things I'm supposed to say here. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and if you want to support me, you can use my Amazon and eBay affiliate links, both of which will be in the description. Thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.